name's Garth and welcome back to my photography channel. As I hinted at in my last video, I've gone and done what I was going to do anyway, and bought an Olympus 100-400. Happy days. So I thought the best thing that I can do is give a little review of the lens, what I think of it from my perspective as a hobby photographer. And the best way to do that is come to a RSPB reserve, so here we are today at Frampton Marsh in Lincolnshire. It's a great place, lots of birds, so we're going to see what we can get. So a little bit about the lens and why I got it. So first things first, I got the lens primarily to replace my Tamron 15600. So I'm looking for something of equal focal distance. And like I said in the last video, it seems quite good because obviously on a cropped sensor, well, micro four third sensor, that focal length is doubled. So that 100 to 400 becomes 200 to 800 millimeters. I also bought a 1.4 teleconverter with it. So we're talking about an effective full frame focal length of 280 by 1120. Do I need all that? We'll see. But it sure is fun being able to capture birds from far away. There is some trade-offs to that, of course. The minimum aperture that I can get with that telegon photo attached is f.9. And that means that I really need to have a bright and sunny day. As you can see, today is looking to be bright and sunny. There was a little bit of snow earlier, but that's gone now. That's the British weather. So hoping that that will allow enough light into the lens for me to get the shots that I want. So things that I love about this lens, it's incredibly light. It's about 1.1 kilograms, which are can just under three pounds compared to the Tamron, which was just under two kilos, I think I'm 1.8 kilos. This thing's beautiful to handhold. It's almost a dream come true. Um, you know, that really is a great thing of the micro four third cameras and something I'm slowly falling in love with that the lenses are so compact, they're a lot lighter. And for my kind of photography, they just make life a lot easier. Another pro, the lens is sharp. I mean, I can't tell the difference between my Tamron on the D7200. Maybe if I put it on a full frame camera, I would have that higher dynamic range, lower light performance, etc., etc. blah, blah, blah. But the thing is, when I load it on the computer, print it out, it is what I expect it to be. It captures the pictures just as sharp as it did with that lens. And that's the important thing. Does it do what I want it to do and what I need it to do? Sure, it might not end up in Wildlife Photographer of the Year competitions. I'm pretty sure I've seen people enter with Olympus cameras and do quite well, so I can't really complain. But it does what I need it to do, and that's another important factor. So sharpness, thumbs up. The image stabilization on this thing is absolutely amazing as well. I mean, the noticeable difference you get when you flick on that image stabilization. I'll do a little video of it so you can see what it's like, but it's another amazing feature of all Olympus cameras, it seems. They really have nailed down image stabilization a lot more to such a point where you notice the difference. So this is me hand holding at 560 millimeters. And as you can see, the image stabilization is quite good. But as soon as I turn the image stabilization off, it becomes a lot more difficult to keep it center. Just showing how great the Olympus is at image stabilization. It really is a fantastic camera and lens. So let's talk about the bad of this lens. It's always going to be the aperture, the low light performance with these lenses. It is a problem with micro thirds, but that's only a problem if you're going to go out at night or in dark and shoot. If you're on a sunny day like this, that's not a problem. So we're good. And another complaint, and this is a really personal one. The rotation ring for the um, focal length, it's the wrong way around. Well, it's the wrong way around for me. So, yeah, I'm not used to it. That's something I can hopefully overcome after many years of using the Tamron, but still irks me. 
why can't they be the same way around on all cameras? So a big question on everyone's minds might be, how does this compare to the Panasonic that I used last week? So the Panasonic got pictures and shots that I wanted it to get. Um, and it performed absolutely admirably. Personally, I like trying to match cameras with the lenses, the same body manufacturers, it just makes sense to me. The main differences are the Olympus is a little bit heavier, we're talking about 200 grams, and the form factor is a little bit bigger. I would say the stabilization might be a little bit better. Once again, that's because we're pairing the manufacturer lens with the manufacturer body, but at the end of the day, I don't think that's something you would really notice. Okay, so let's rattle off some questions about this lens. What am I gonna be using it for? Hopefully it's obvious, birds, but I did use the Tamron 150 600 a little bit for macro, which sounds really, really weird, but I have got some good butterfly shots with that in the past. So I'm hoping as the summer comes, warmer weather, we can get a few more butterflies, insects. Once again, it's a good lens. If you can get the stabilization on it, it makes sense for that. Why am I buying things for the Olympus and not the Z6? I said in my last video, lenses for that are expensive. I would love full frame lenses, but they are heavy and I just like to get out and about sometimes. So for this, chicken in a bag, throwing it in and coming to a place like this and getting great photos, it makes sense for me. Is the Telecon photo any good? It has issues and you have to respect those issues. You have to come out on a bright day. I do think the images that I get with it are sharp, but we're hoping to compare. And I'll try and put some images on the screen for what it's like with and without a teleconverter to try and give you an understanding of what those images are like that you can get with that. So to give you an idea of why you would use a teleconverter, here we are at 560 millimeters, the maximum that this lens will go with a 1.4 teleconverter on. And here we are again at 400 millimeters. As you can see, it doesn't look like it is that much difference over that range, but it's enough just to give you a little bit more filled frame and that extra few millimeters does count. But as we've already said, there is some trade-offs with that. Here's the same shot at 100 millimeters on this lens, just to give you an idea of what it's like zoomed all the way out. This is without the teleconverter. So a little bit about Frampton Marsh while walking along. It's got one of the best views of the wash, which is one of the largest estuaries in Britain. Glad I said that right, because estuaries. It's really hard to say. Other things, it has a 360 degree hide, as long as many other hides. We've been inside it so far and it's just amazing, the amount of birds you can see. I don't have a clue what any of them are. I mean, there's things called lap wings, I think. There's some kind of crane flying about. I will put pictures on the screen. I will try and identify them. It's a bit like mushrooms all over again. I don't have a clue what I'm taking a picture of, but I can at least share them. And I enjoy taking them. Also has a decent car park, visitor center. There's a new calf being built, but the current one does have sandwiches, cakes, flapjacks, good hot chocolate, so I've heard. But a really good important thing, we're in Lincolnshire, so everything is really flat. How awesome is that? A really good thing about this place, gravel paths, and they're absolutely flat. I mean, look at this. How cool. Just makes it so easy to get around. It's really well looked after RSPB place. Really enjoying being here. As usual, if you like this video, remember to like and subscribe. I really do appreciate all the feedback and it really means a lot to me. If you want to support me, check out the link in the description and buy me a coffee. And thank you to everyone who's bought me a coffee so far. Once again, that sign of appreciation and that you're enjoying what I'm doing really means a lot. And it's great to see. Hope you've enjoyed the pictures that I've got today. I'll put a few more on the screen after. But let me know what you think. Give me some feedback. Give me some comments. If you have any questions about the Olympus 100-400, shoot them down below. If you have any questions about the AM5 Mark III, once again, shoot them down below. I'll try to answer them. I'm still fairly new to this camera and lens, but I am learning and I can always go away and try and find something out or take any pictures that you need me to take. So don't be afraid to ask and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching all.